Uh, it, you know, age catches up with you. But there's a journey behind that um, about how I traveled to get there. And it's not a pretty one. But that journey leads up to me being world champion and then me being here on stage. We want you to be the world's most dangerous man. At five years old, I was born in Warner Robins, Georgia. At five years old, I had gotten into some trouble at a very young age. At 10 years old, at strong arm robbery, I had gotten stabbed and probably seven or different robberies. When I ran away, I had to have a means of survival, so I would steal from stores, you know, all the healthy stuff like candy and chips. <laughs> it didn't take long for Ken to end up in a group home. From the time I was 10 to the time I was 17 years old, I was in placement. But even there, he found it hard to fit in. And seven group homes later, 13-year-old Kenneth Kilpatrick was sent to a home run by Bob Shamrock, who would later adopt him. The one thing that my father did was that he understood there was an issue and he needed to find out what that issue was and figure out what it is that that kid would be interested in. He directed me towards sports. I started going, wow, all that anger and all that people saying, I'm going to go nowhere, you know, you're going to go to prison and you're going to die and all these things that were said to me were probably true at that time. But someone had to figure out how to change me, how to direct me in, a, in, in the right direction and not in the wrong direction. And it had to take somebody who cared or somebody who wanted to take the time to find out what that direction was. And that was my father who adopted me. After I was at the home for a while, I ended up becoming a peer counselor, a counselor, and I ran the home. And that was in between me going to college. For years, Ken dominated the sport. He was a feared opponent and quickly rose to the top. And then after that, I went and owned my own group home. And that was in between me being a professional athlete. You know, as far as your mixed martial arts competition, that started off with Pan Craze. I went over to Japan, and it was my first time over there. There's 13,000 people cheering for me. And I ended up winning the match. It's my first time over there. And when I felt that, that's where my career started. That path led him straight to ultimate fighting. Then the UFC came around and I started fighting the UFC and, and there was this guy who wore pajamas. And I was like, man, that dude's a punk. He's wearing jammies to fight, man, I'll smash him. So I go in and I don't even study who the guy is and I go in there and I get choked out by a guy in pajamas. Choked out. Well, when I, I did MMA, well, when they shut it down and went off TV, I couldn't make a living. But your stint in the WWF, I almost burned out and I had to get out because I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I knew where I was going with it. Uh, of course, you went from there into uh, the back into the UFC where you actually fought uh, Tito Ortiz, one of the highest grossing fights of all time. But his wild lifestyle cost him everything. I had a family, I had cars, I had houses, I had everything. I lost what it was that I was doing and where I came from and who I was and what I was trying to do. I lost all that because I had this thing I was going after. But then the other side of the coin was he had a certain amount of uh, uh, character. The road that I've traveled has been very rocky. This kid is out there, but deep down between all that hurt and disappointment and lies, there's a human being down there. He had his own kind of what was right and what was wrong. I believe in God, and that is the reason why I am successful. That is the reason why I'm still here doing what I'm doing. I had a broken neck, broken hand, broken wrist, broken foot. If you would have saw me at 10 years old or 13 years old, you'd have turned around and ran the other way. Vince McMahon set it out in front of me and said, listen, we want you to be you. We want you to be the world's most dangerous man. You gotta have faith.